Okay, I talked about these market bags. Okay, this one was made out of Rebound uh, by Lion Brand. And let's see, I think it's nylon. Yes, 100% nylon. And nylon, this nylon is very stretchy anyway and uh, makes a super stretchy bag because the chain, the mesh, uh, just to the pattern uh, without stretchy yarn gives a lot. And so I've, it's really been convenient here in the shop um, to hang yarn up. And it holds a lot. And so these bags are a blast. I've been making them uh, fabulous gifts. I know I've mentioned them a couple of times, but they do make terrific gifts. Plus, very useful. Plastic is disappearing. All right. And as you can see, these give a lot. Okay. And then the single crochet up here gives a lot of a, this really stabilizes it. This one, let's see, this is a 50-50 um, acrylic cotton blend. Um, this one's made out of a, a chain yarn that is 100% cotton. And then this one is the one that I'm going to use as a demonstrator for this video. And this is made out of that re-up yarn that I'd mentioned before in a previous video. Um, it's made out of recycled cotton. And I did the different colors intentionally so that you could see from light to dark the way it's put together. Here's the cast on, okay, and then this part is finished. The netting, okay, the, the body of the bag is finished. Over here, you gather them back up and do the other side. And then the last thing you do is make the parts that go around oopsie and finish it off with the straps and stabilizing the sides and really terrific bags and very simple all right now the yarn i'm going to use for this to demonstrate with is called zz twist it's from lion brand and it is Z twist, which virtually all yarns are an S twist. I think I've mentioned that before. Um, and as a crocheter, you'll notice that a lot of yarns, whenever because <clears throat> whenever you loop in your counterclockwise direction, um, the yarn, uh, the plies come apart. They come become untwisted. A Z twist twists in the other direction, um, eliminating that for crochet. So I think it was pretty cool that they made something specifically for crocheters like that. Let's see, I think I'm going to zoom in just a smidge. Let's bring you over here. Okay, whenever you start out, however wide, let me grab this back up here, however wide you want this section to be, Okay, it doesn't matter what size yarn you use. Um, this I did with 20. I've done, been doing most of them with 20 stitches across here, just simplicity sake. Um, I had a finer yarn that I used. Uh, I went 30 across just for me to be able to remember things. Okay, so I'm going to chain however wide you want it to be plus one. Okay, so... That means I'm going to chain 21, 4, 5, 6, 7, 18, and 20, plus 1, for the turning chain, because that's going to be the first stitch. <clears throat> and then go back on these back bumps, because it makes a much neater edge. And that back bump, going to single crochet in each one of those. See that bump that's raised right there on the back side of your chain? And single crochet across. And it can be a little awkward going into that, that back bump like that. It's, it is worth it. It just makes such an 
so much nicer of an edge. Now this yarn has a bit of give to it. Um, if I were using 100% cotton that has virtually no give at all, I would have gone up a hook size for my cast on because I have a difficult time keeping my cast uh, my chain loose. My knitter keeps on talking. Okay. And the final single crochet, chain one, and that'll be the first stitch. Okay, because that's the first stitch, <clears throat> pardon me, counting that chain one as the first stitch, we're going to skip over to the second hole. Okay, this is actually, that's my corner. So we're going to skip over to the second hole in the top of that second stitch. And then single crochet. Go to the end, and then the last stitch will be in the top of that single crochet. I mean in the top of that chain one. Top of the chain one, single crochet, chain one, and turn. And again, skip that first hole, go into the next. right so this is the part we were making okay however wide your chain was and now we're going to begin the yellow part here making the loops to begin the mesh or yeah i guess mesh netting part of the bag okay and let's see Okay, so I did what I do. I think I did six rows. Now you're going to, let's zoom in just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, now instead of the chain one and turn, you're going to chain five. And turn. Now previously, to keep a smooth edge, we were skipping this first stitch. We're not going to skip this first one. We're going to go ahead and do a single crochet into that first opening there. Okay, chain five. Go into the next, top of the next stitch. Okay, and you're going to do that single crochet, chain five, all the way across to the end. Now I'm going to go into the top of the chain one that we did at the beginning of the row, or the end of the previous row rather. Top of that, make sure you get two threads there. And do a single crochet, and instead of chain one, going to chain five again. Okay, turn. For the first few rows of the netting, I highly recommend counting how many loops you have. Um, they're very bunched up and, and very together, and if it's wrong here, it's going to continue to be wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. All right. Um, I have, I have more than once um, gotten a few rows down and found that I didn't have the right number of loops. So I would say every two or three rows, go ahead. I don't think it's necessary to do it every time, but sp especially in the beginning, the first few rows where they're all bunched up together, um, turn around and you're going to go into that first one. Go ahead and count how many loops you have on those first few rows. Okay, so we have our chain five. 
And in each of these loops, I'm going to do a single crochet and then chain five. And chain five. Another thing I recommend is if you're taking a break or, you know, stopping to count or, or for whatever reason you're taking a pause, I recommend you pause on the chain five, okay, um, rather than here because more than once <laughs> I've come back, picked up my project and gone straight in and then, okay, there's no loop there and I've found that mistake later. Okay, so I do recommend before you set your, your work down to do the chain five. Go into that last one, single crochet, chain five. Let's try and count one more time. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. All right. So you continue on that as long, um, as deep as you want your basket or your your bag. And let's come back out. Okay, because you're making all of this netting. Uh, this one is 30 rows. This is 30 rows of knitting. Um, 30, 35, and because this has so much stretch, I don't know that I would go much bigger than that because just like anything, if it's too big and you fill it, um, the bag might handle it, but you may not. And then I will be back after I finish my knitting. All right, after finishing your netting, it's time to finish this, finished all the netting, now ready to do the other side, which is the same as the first, the beginning, in reverse. Okay, so here's mine. And then before you might want to check those loops one more time. Let's see, you should have something that looks similar to this. Okay. And if you started with 20, you should still have 20 loops going across. So at the end, let's zoom in just a smidge. So you just made last loop chain one and turn. Now we're going to gather those back up, single crochet, into each one of the loops. Now what I do, because I, I just have a tendency to let it stretch too wide if I do otherwise, is I fold it up to where that next stitch is going to be and then make my, my single crochet. Here's the, <clears throat> excuse me, here's the stitch I just made. Here's the loop I want to go into. And I just fold them together so that I bring them close. I'll show you. Because if I leave it like this, often I'll let these, let that stitch get big. And so I just fold it over whenever I make each of the stitches. And what you should end up with are 20 or however many loops you have single crochets there's the last one okay gonna chain one turn you're gonna work back across and if you did 20 across then that means you're gonna skip this one go into the the next, the next opening there, that next stitch, and single crochet. So you'll have 19 single crochets going back across. Okay. 
and they can start to turn a little bit like these have. Okay, you're not going to go into that chain right there. And then chain one, turn, skip the first opening, skip that first hole, go into the next. And then single crochet across 19. And repeat that until you have the same number of rows going up this way. Let's zoom out. As you began with on this side. So I believe I did six over here. I'm going to go up six rows and then I'll be back. Okay, so now I should have finished. with your matching rows. Here's the other end, okay? And so <clears throat> what we're going to begin now is the straps and the side, all that's in the blue. Is it all the way out? There we go. We'll do all of the blue, the straps. Let's turn the angle a little bit. There we go. Okay, so how we will begin so we're going to chain 65, 70, 75, whatever you want to do. I believe I did 70 on this. Um, going to chain 70. Then going to pick up these stitches here. Chain another 70 up here. And then pick up these stitches. And whenever you get over here to where you <clears throat> change your first 75, you'll want to put a, a marker in there, okay? Okay, now whenever you do this chain, because we're going from one side to the other, making the strap first, and whenever you do that, you want to make sure that you don't twist, okay? And so what I usually do is I just hold my work in my hand while I do that chain. That way I'm sure by the time I'm ready to connect over here with a slip stitch that I haven't twisted it. Now this is something you want to do in one go. You don't want to do it and pick it up and do it again, unless you're far, far more talented than I. So chain however many you're going to. I'm going to do 65. This is pretty stretchy. Okay. What I do is up here in the very, very corner, I do get under two threads. Two strands of yarn and do a slip stitch where you just go through both and then I'm going to single crochet into the ends you're going to have that was um, the end of a single crochet this is the one of the chain ones and this is a single crochet the top of the, the side of a single crochet This is one of the chain ones. There's a single crochet. Now, if you look at how your rows, the ends of your rows are. Okay, like right here, that's the single crochet that joined this. We're going to do a, a single crochet in the side of that single crochet, one in the loop, and one in the side of the single crochet, one in the loop, all the way down. And we should end up with the same number of stitches as you had total rows. So for me, that's going to be 30 single crochets. And then pick up on this side the same as you did on the other. And then up here, I just do another slip knot, or I'm sorry, not slip knot, but slip stitch. And then chain the same number that you did up for the other strap. In my case, it was 70. And then find your corner, 
do a slip stitch, single crochet down the side, and then again, there's the top of single, you got a single crochet up here, the side of it, put a single crochet in that, one in your loop, and then one in the single crochet, the side of the single crochet, and again you should have the same number of however many rows you had. In my case that would be 30. That's how many single crochets you should have. And I do like to put a marker because sometimes I, get, I lose my way on which strap I started first and I'm just not real sure about exactly where I began, where, which side I ended on. And just like with, <coughs> pardon me, and just like with the initial chain and picking up stitches, again, I recommend you turn your chain over and go through the back bumps and pick up your stitches along your strap and single crochet in, into each one. And however long your chain was, mine was 70. That's how many single crochets you should end up with. And then what you're going to do is go all the way around, single crochet into all of the either chain bumps or single crochets. And continue to do that. Around and around until you get to the width that you like. Um, me, the de what determines the width of my straps is I either match it up to this or if I if I make it a little bit deeper and I expect to use it for heavier things, I'll make the, the strap wider. All right, and then I'll be back for the finish. Mm -hmm. All right, so now what I did is I went around, I did five rows. Oh, I need to get a pair of scissors. I can't believe a dog hair. I can't believe it. Okay. Now what I like to do, I've got my marker here. Okay. So that tells me that this will be my last single crochet. And then just to make a smooth transition, I do two, three, four slip stitches. Make sure they're stretched out, pull it through. And then use a tapestry needle. Oopsie. And thread it through. Take out my marker. Weave in this end. In the beginning. And then whenever I weave this one in, I also uh, tighten up because that corner always ends up loose. Where I began the original slip knot and chain. And so whenever I weave in this end, I'll close that up. And there you go. And you have a nice, very stretchy shopping bag for you or to give as a gift. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe. Uh, comments are always welcome and I always respond. So thank you so much for joining me during this.